You have an amazing Twitter feed, by the way. <laughs> I went on it, <laughs> became a follower. Do you view Twitter or other social media as a, an effective uh, tool for advocacy? I do, um, within its uh, within its range. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's it's disingenuous to act as if social media doesn't play a large role in everything we do. Um, it's the way we communicate. It's often the ways we think. It's what shapes our thinking, and so it can shape our advocacy work. The danger, of course, is that when you can click a button and you can tweet, mm -hmm. when you can simply stay behind your computer screen, that you are less likely to be physically involved in the movements that really need physical bodies behind them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have that. I don't have that much concern because teacher, teachers and teacher educators are willing to put their bodies forward mm -hmm. to do the work that we want to do. So. I see social media and Twitter as an example, as a way to bring people together in common cause and show that the issues that you have in your state are the issues that are being faced in another state that are being faced in another country. And then it's a matter of, so how do you bring those people together? How do you, what you've connected online? How do you find connections physically, even if it's a virtual physicality? Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the conventions really come into play. And the, the summer conference of CEE, that something that you can start online and start virtually, the conversation, the concept, the idea, can then be realized when you bring people together, bring your brains together, and begin to sort of grow that work. 